So you might have already heard about object oriented programming in other programming languages like Java. It is very similar here. So basically till now whatever we did was like uh, procedural programming that is a different paradigm, programming paradigm. So we have not used any classes or object set. We have only written procedures. Procedures means functions. So we have written functions for everything. And the problem with the procedural languages as the code becomes bigger and bigger, it will be messed up. It will be like uh, a function will be calling other function and other function will be calling other function. If you like, try to see the flow, it will be very confusing. So in order to simplify it, object oriented programming has been proposed instead of procedural language, procedural programming and Python is an object oriented programming language. Everything in Python is an object. For example, integer, string, list, dictionary, whatever you have seen so far, all are objects and all of them have uh, attributes and methods. Attributes are nothing but variables and methods are nothing but functions. So from now on, whenever we have a function within a class, we are going to call it as a method. Okay, so objects have methods. Now, object oriented programming language is used to solve the problems in an easy way using objects and uh, classes. And Python is an object oriented programming language, just like C and Java. And we can easily develop the application using object oriented approach. So, it will be easy to develop a very big project using object oriented approach. <clears throat> if the project is very small, then procedural way will be easier instead of having overhead with objects and methods but if the project is very big object oriented programming is always suggestible and object oriented paradigm is used to design the programs using classes and objects so there are certain terms that you have to understand here we will go through one of them one of them one after the other the soups concepts in python focuses on creating reusable code so this is the most important benefit of uh, using object oriented programming. You can reuse the code that has already been written and you can extend it. It is not possible using uh, procedural programming. Okay, next slide. So if you have to understand object oriented programming, you have to understand what is a class, what is an object, what is a method, inherit inheritance, polymorphism, encapsulation and abstraction. So these are general definitions. Here in this video, I will be going through general definitions of this and later we will see examples where they are actually used. So a class is a blueprint of an object. So basically, if you want to look at a class, it is like a blueprint. For example, if you want to build a building, you are going to construct the plan on a paper. So that is a blueprint using which the actual building will be built. And if you want to build a car, you will first design it on paper in a computer, of course. But let's say you are designing it on a paper that is called a blueprint. Once the blueprint is ready, you can make any number of copies. So those copies are called as objects and the blueprint is called as class. There will be only one blueprint and many objects or many objects. Okay. A class is a collection of data and methods. So inside a class, there can be data, which are nothing but attributes. You can say in simple words, variables. So inside a uh, object, there will be variables and methods. These variables can be anything. They can be a string, integer, or, or list, or dictionary, or any other object. Okay. Now, when you are writing a class, when you are defining a class or giving a name to a class, you should always give it a Pascal case in Python. These, these are the rules in Python. Every programming language has their own rules. In Python, you should always name a class in Pascal case. What is Pascal case? Take every, every word in the uh, class name and you use a capital letter for every word like this. Pascal, P capital, case, C capital. This is called a Pascal case. So in this case, you are going to write the names of the classes. And we didn't discuss about the other things. So there is camel case. Camel case is popular in Java. In Python, we don't use camel case. Camel case says that first word should be small letter. The starting letter should be small and all the remaining words should be capital letters. Should be capital letters. 
and now coming to the variables and methods in the python language we use snake case so a snake case is nothing but all small letters and each word is separated by underscore that is snake case so python uses pascal case for class names and for object names and variables and methods it is going to use snake case snake case means so this is a convention it is not like you will get a compiler error if you do, don't follow this you will not get any error but it is a practice it is a convention if everyone follows it and if your if your code has to be readable then you follow these rules so that anyone reading the code will easily understand whether it is a class name or an object name like that okay <clears throat> and now an object so everything is an object in python integer string whatever we have seen so far everything is an object an object is the instance of a class there has to be a class from which instances are created till now we didn't see the classes where we have created the objects directly we didn't see the classes we will see that how to create objects from a class so an object is an instance of a class and an object is an entity that has some state and behavior state is nothing but variables present in it the values of the variables is called state and behavior is nothing but what are the methods that are present inside the class that becomes that becomes the inside an object that becomes the behavior of the object we can access the class data with the help of object of the class so when you have to access the data which is present in the class you have to create an object and you have to use it okay and now method a method is nothing but a function which is defined inside the body of the class so when you put a function within the body of the class that is called a method and every object will inherit when will get it every object will get the method that is defined in the class from which it is created and methods are used to define and manipulate the behavior of the object so using methods you can change the variables which are present within a class we will see with examples and then inheritance so in inheritance what happens is there will be a base class already defined now we can inherit in, we can inherit it in the derived class sometimes they are also called as super class and sub class now we can a base class can be derived or a uh, what i can say is a sub class can get the properties of the super class this is called inheritance we will see with an example how it happens so base class is also known as super class or parent class and derived class is also known as sub class or child class okay next slide now polymorphism so polymorphism means same name but different functions so for example if you see plus if you apply to strings it is concatenation if you apply to integers it is addition the same thing is used as different it has different meanings of based on situation right so a polymorphism means the same word which has different meanings at different times is called polymorphism we will see that and encapsulation so encapsulation is putting everything together so all the related things if you put them together then it is called as encapsulation in a class we are going to put all the attributes together and all the methods which act on those attributes together that is called as encapsulation abstraction abstraction is used to hide the internal details and show only functionality for example when you are creating a copy or a object of a class you don't have to understand how the class is written what code is present within the class how it is implemented you have if you do you will only know that you know it is going to perform the task that is necessary for example if there is a method called as sort internally it can be implemented as bubble sort or insertion sort or merge sort or quick sort any sort can be you know implemented internally but all that you know is sort will sort the list it doesn't know you don't have to know the internal details of the implementation that is called as abstraction okay thank you now let's see a small example of how to create an object from a class let's do a very simple one here so let us say there is a class class student is there 
and I don't want anything to be present inside it. So I will write pass there. Then you have to write a class and or a method or anything in Python. And if you don't or a if for a for where you don't have the body of it, you have to write pass. Otherwise, you'll get an error. Pass. Now I want to create a student object S one. Now how do I create a student object? Is write the class name followed by the parentheses. Two braces. If you write two braces, the normal parentheses, then an object will be created. Okay. Now I want to add some variables to the class of an object. So for that I am writing s one dot name equal to. So how do you access or write a variable? Is you put a dot and name just like how the normal variable works. But here this variable will be as associated with this object. S one dot name equal to sign. And s one dot id equal to some id number, and s one dot marks equal to something like eighty five. Now, what happens here is an object is created, and to that object we are attaching three names or three variables: name, id, and marks. And now you can print it, and you can see. You can. Print s one dot name. Now it will print sign. Got it. So like that, you can create one more object and you can add all these three. S two equal to student. By using the class name, we are creating an object. So now here while typing, Python is already suggesting that student is a Class. If you see it, you might not be able to see it properly, but there will be a small C symbol there. C represents class. M represents method. V represents variable. Okay, so it is already showing that it is a class. So again, we are doing the same thing repetitively. This is not a right way to create classes and objects. When you have variables, you have to you know it is better that you put them within the class so that all the objects will automatically get them. And when you have the initial values as different values, that is the state, the initial state of the object is different from the both the or all the objects created. It is better that you create them using something called as constructor. Okay, so. So what I mean to say is, if you observe it, S one and S two both are having name, ID, and marks. You can do it like this, but the problem is you have to do it again and again, which is a waste of time and waste of code. You can actually put them within the class, and you can actually initialize them. For that, there is something called as initializer, which we will see shortly. And also, when you are typing like this, the problem is when you are typing like this. There is a chance that you might type something wrong, and it will be accepted. For example, there might be error in the name of name spelling. So this is not the right way to do it. You can do it like this, but this is not the right way. In the next video, we will see how to use an initializer and do the same thing. Okay, thank you. Let's now write a <coughs> class in a proper way by adding attributes to it. And the methods to it, and here we are also going to see what is a constructor. So let's now start it. Now class student. Now we are going to have a method, a special method called as init underscore underscore init underscore underscore. When you write like this, then a new method is going to be created. Uh, this method is called as constructor. Whenever you create an object, automatically this constructor is going to be run. Generally, the purpose of this constructor is to initialize the values of the variables. Okay, and also you will see self here. We didn't type it. It actually auto filled. Our Python has auto filled self there. So always remember, whenever you are writing a method within a class, there will always be self as the first parameter self is nothing but this particular 
object itself whatever object that you are calling it from that particular object is represented in self so self will always be present as the first parameter you don't have to pass anything to self it will automatically be filled by our uh, python so you don't have to write it so self now let us say while creating the object i want to initialize name id and marks just like in previous example i want to initialize name id and marks i will do it here now while creating the object whatever parameters the user is going to pass they will be passed into these arguments name id and marks i will show you so you have to write like this self dot name which means a local variable or a variable is attribute is going to be created by the name name attribute id attribute marks and they are initialized with whatever you have passed to this initializer or it, let's let's call it constructor so whatever you have passed to the constructor using those it will be initialized okay now let's write one more method it is a normal method it is a function a method is nothing but a function when it is written within the class it is called as a method so again see it self is automatically filled you have to write self even if it is not filled always the first parameter of any method in a class has to be self okay and when you are referring to the attributes of the object you should always write self dot name self dot id self dot marks like that okay now let's create the objects student s1 equal to student now you have to specify what is the name what is the id and what are the marks if you don't specify these things name id and marks there will be an error you have to specify all the three even though there are four parameters here we are passing only three arguments that's fine you can pass you have to pass three arguments and the first parameter is automatically filled by python so you have filled up the name as balaji id as 469 marks as just like in previous example now after creating the object you are trying to call display name method which is present so how do you call a method you have to put a dot and you have to call the method name on that object so that will automatically be called similarly a student2 is created here also the student2 has different initial values so we are going to call the student2 with a different initial value so it is showing that my name is balaji my name is marks so this is how so the way we have written in this program is the proper way to write a class so class is going to have attributes here and then one more thing you don't have to always pass the initial values of the attributes sometimes there can be default values we will see it in the next example and uh, the, without without any passing any values also we can write attributes so now we have three attributes and two methods one method is initialization method and the other method is display name method okay thank you